Okay, we are going to look at a work energy problem that will look strikingly simi similar to a force and motion problem um, that we've done in the past. It says, uh, that is not the right one. I have to read the right one. A baggage handler throws a 15 kilogram suitcase horizontally along the floor of an airplane luggage compartment with an initial speed of one and a half meters per second. The suitcase slides two meters before stopping. What is the coefficient of friction between the suitcase and the floor? And is it static or kinetic? All right, so let's look at this from the perspective of a work energy problem. We could do kinematics, we could do forces, and look at that relationship, but we can find it's very efficient if we do work energy. So here's our suitcase, it goes sliding along the floor. We're told that it travels two meters and has an initial velocity equal to 1.2, oops, that's 1.5, 1.2, meters per second, and a final velocity of zero meters per second. It comes to a stop. All right, and it comes to a stop because of friction. So we know that work is being done on this object because it changes its kinetic energy. And therefore, the net work being done has to be responsible for that change in kinetic energy. So we need to examine the forces acting on this suitcase, what ones are doing work, and then use that to look at our work energy theorem. So let's draw a quick free body diagram of the forces acting on this suitcase. Well, we know we have the force of gravity, which equals mass times gravity. The suitcase, uh, are we given the mass of the suitcase? Maybe not. Let's look. We may not need it, but I just don't remember. We are given it 15 kilograms. Let me just write that up there so I don't have to flip through my papers anymore. Okay, so we have the mass of the suitcase, uh, excuse me, the force of gravity on the suitcase. We know that the normal force is, interact is acting upwards that between the suitcase and the conveyor belt. Um, they're compressing each other. And we have the force of friction acting on the suitcase, it's kinetic friction, which of course was part B of the question, but because it's sliding, and remember kinetic friction is that sliding friction. And that's it. There's nothing causing the suitcase to move forward during the slowing down phase. So these are our only forces acting. All right, in theory, any force has the potential to do work depending on the, inner, the angle between the force and the displacement of that object. And so we know that the suitcase is covering a distance in the horizontal direction. So it's going to be real easy to do work on some of them. The work by the force of gravity, well, they're perpendicular. So the work done by the force of gravity is zero. There is no work done by the force of gravity. The work done by the normal force, again, perpendicular, the force n times the distance 2 times the cosine of 90. So they're perpendicular as well. No work is being done by the normal force. But what about friction? Indeed, there is a work being done by the force of friction. It's that force of friction times the distance times the cosine of the angle between the distance and the fr frictional force, which is 180 degrees. Oops. And so we find that the force of friction times 2 is equal to our work done by friction. And so since that is the only work being done on the object, that's equal to our change in kinetic energy. So minus 2 times the force of friction is equal to 1 half mv final squared minus 1 half mv initial squared. We know that that block comes to rest, so V final is zero. We're left with minus two times the force of friction is equal to minus one half the mass, 15, times the f initial velocity of 1.2 squared. So our force of friction ends up being equal to 10.8. All right, now we're not asked for the force of friction, we're asked for the coefficient. So we want to keep in mind that the coefficient friction 
is equal to mu times n. So our 10.8 newtons is equal to mu times n. Well, we aren't given n. So to solve for that force n, we do have to do a small force analysis. Now n is in the vertical dimension. And so we'll start with that vertical dimension of force analysis. We know that the sum of the forces vertical is equal to zero since the object is not changing its motion up or down. That's the normal force minus the force of gravity acting in the opposite direction. So we see that N is equal to mg. So using that in our friction relationship, <clears throat> excuse me, we have 10.8 is equal to mu times 294, so the mass of 15 times 9.8. And we discover that mu is equal to 0 0.037. All right, one fell swoop using our ideas of energy. So recognizing that when an object is changing its motion, it's going through a change in kinetic energy. That's being done by work. Work is causing that change in kinetic energy, which is being done by forces through a distance using that relationship to very briefly solve for our coefficient. Good job.